dreaming of what could happen in your life, your marriage, your work life, your business, your church. What could happen if we actually get a hold of this? The sum is greater than the parts. When you and I connect together, something similar but much more powerful takes place. What could we accomplish? I tell you, there's no limit to what we can do if we do it together. Revival is something that is experienced together. It's something where the Holy Spirit is poured out on a church or a city and people are experiencing it together. Revival is not an individual experience. Revival is something that connects us powerfully. Hallelujah. Welcome back from lunch. We're pastors Hank and Linda from... Gateway City Church in Modesto. We're happy to be here. I know you're awake. I can tell. You know, look around out here. This is a good-looking group. You know, God's people are just good-looking. I appreciate all of you. Hopefully, you. hopefully you ate something that'll give you energy and not something that'll bring on a nap. How good was Pastor Eric's message this morning? Well, this afternoon session is going to be amazing as well. But before we get into more uh, messages, we want to do a little something. Would you stand up? We're going to have you move around a little bit. We're going to have you do a little icebreaker here. What we want you to do is find somebody you don't know. Tell them your name, and then share with them a piece of the best advice that you've ever been given, either about a personal thing or about ministry things. But I want you to do this as a two-part process, because we're talking about teams. And a part of communication and a part of teamwork is we not only share, but we listen. And so each of you, as you share this one piece of the best advice you've ever received, listen for the other person's message as well, because that same advice they got that helped them may also help you. So we're going to take two minutes. So go ahead and, and go and say hi to somebody, introduce yourself, and share.
All right. Time's up out there. I hear lots of good advice, and I got some of the best advice from this young pastor that came up here. Tremendous word of wisdom. Hallelujah. All right. I hear a lot of chatter out there. Okay, we're going to do something fun real quick before we honor some groups of people. I have a couple of books. Now, this book by Pastor Kathy must go to a woman, okay? So, if you're a woman on the fifth row and you're in the seventh chair, come and get it. If there is that, if you're in more than one, fifth row and seventh chair, I will buy you a book. Anybody in the fifth row and seventh seat that's a woman? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that one's empty. Any Over there? Okay. Come and get it. Hallelujah. Oh, got one over there too? Okay. I will, I will purchase you a book myself. All right. Well, hallelujah. That works well. Okay. There you go, dear. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now, this one is by Pastor Chris. I have not, The Wounded Heart, Healing the Wounded Heart. This is a perfect book for any one of us. All right, gentlemen there in the white shirt, I'm just going to give it to you. You had your hand up first. <laughs> Enjoy. Hallelujah. All right, now, this is for me. I bought a T-shirt because I was going to wear it because, you know, this one. Because, you know, women don't like to have something on that everybody else in the building has on. So I bought this shirt, and I put it on. And then I looked around, and half of, the, half of the group has this shirt on. So I went and bought a gray one. And God said, give it away. So here it comes. I thought it would go further than that. Hallelujah. All right. You have to wear it, though. If, if it's too big, you probably could trade it in for something a little smaller. All right. Okay. The groups that we're going to honor today is the healing group. Anybody that's in the healing ministry, anyone that's in prayer ministry, and anyone that is in, is in the community outreach. These are amazing men and women of God. I don't know about you, but I've been touched by each and every one of these groups personally in my life. They have such a heart for God's people. They sacrifice all day. They give up their energy. They give up their time in ministering to you and I. They minister to our cities, to our churches, to our workplaces, to our homes, as well as us individually. So they're a powerful group of men and women they're unparalleled in their dedication to the body of Christ. I have a really quick story that's interesting that has to do with those particular groups. About 12 or 13 years ago, my husband and I went to Canada to a conference. And while we were there, he took sick. And he was very, very sick and very, very much in pain. So we did all the things over the counter. We bought this and that, Pepto and that kind of stuff. And nothing helped. So finally, we had to go to the ER. And they found out that his appendix had ruptured. And not only had it ruptured, but it had been ruptured for several days. So he had a, a real thing going on there. So here I am in a strange country. The people that attended the church with me had all gone home. So it was me and my sick husband. Don't think I didn't call every prayer member that I knew, every team of prayer warriors, of healing warriors, to pray. And if it hadn't been from them, I would probably, for them, I would still be somewhat of a basket case because I had a really tough time being in a foreign land and just not knowing why God would let this happen. You know how you do. But then another thing happened in the parking lot where I would park my car and because there was still snow on the ground, I would have to, they were doing a lot of reconstruction around that area. So I had to walk quite a ways to get to the hospital. And the gentleman that was running the booth at that time for the parking said, you know, ma'am, 
because he asked me what was going on, and I told him, he says, well, you may be here for a while, and it's going to cost you a lot of money every day to park here. So he said, what I'm going to do is give you a little gift card that is good for the parking lot only. And that allowed me to come and go. And he said that was from his church. That his church does an outreach, and they give away these to help people that might be burdened with the cost of a parking lot. And I thought, oh, my gosh, is that God or what? That's community outreach. And so I was really blessed by all three of the groups that we're going to honor this morning. So if you have been in prayer team, healing ministry, or in a community outreach, I want you to stand. Now, I'm going to count you. There should be 376 of you. Okay, starting over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. You, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Look around. If they attend your church, I want you to say something special to them after the conference or after the meeting. Okay, because these, this is a great group of people. Now, one more thing, and I'm going to turn the mic over to Pastor Hank. I know there's been a lot of talk about denim. Well, I don't have a denim jacket, but I got bling. How many of you can match that? <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, Pastor. Hallelujah. You know, I wasn't sure why I was asked to come up today and introduce Pastor David. But I kind of got a picture earlier on. I mean, Pastor David started talking about my family in the cave. <laughs> and I thought, well, there's a connection there. <laughs> and then they started talking, Jordan, about denim jacket. I left mine in the motel, but, you know, I felt like, well, there's a connection. <laughs> and at our church, it's kind of a, a, an inside joke that I started. Those are the best kind, you know, the jokes we start. Well, by creative math, I'm 28. And what I tell people is, if you see me for the first time and I tell you I'm 28, you must think I've had a really hard life. <laughs> but I'm saying all that to say this, that part of the vision that Pastor David has gotten from God and that is birthed into Gateway City Church is about being a church for all people. It's a church for the older, for the younger. For those with hair and those without hair, those who are there, here and those that are there. I debated what to say about Pastor David because we've known him for about 25 years or so. Um, I realized today, though, as I've gone around meeting people, that there are several people here who are fairly new to Gateway. And so I wanted to share a little bit about Pastor David that some of you may not know. I have some stuff that might embarrass him. I'm not going to show. I'm not going to show. But Pastor David is the lead pastor of Gateway City Church, which is a multi-site church that's based in San Jose. He served around the world for more than 35 years. He served as a pastor, as a missionary, as an author, as a church planner, and as a community leader. And through that time, he's become known for building an innovative church and also for inspiring leaders to grow. And one of the things he said just yesterday was that growth involves a certain amount of discomfort. And so I know, Pastor David, you've really caused me to grow <laughs> because, because in recent months I felt a whole lot of discomfort. <laughs> but I thank you for it because the changes are needful. The changes are needed. Change is going to happen whether we allow God to orchestrate it or whether we do nothing. So can we be proactive and create change the way God desires instead of waiting for the world to define it for us and tell us how it should be? Pastor Dave is an author. He's written several books. The first one was Apostles in the Emerging Apostolic Movement. He's written a book called God's Vision for Your Church. He's written a book that's brand new that you've seen handed out today, which is about let's talk about teams. I looked at that last night. I just got it yesterday. I looked at it last night. I can't wait to read it, but to also to share it. 
The vision for teams has been so real to me. We've been doing a series of messages about together. And God put on my heart that this is a crucial time for togetherness and for teams. And so I thank God and Pastor David for that. Pastor David is a very learned man. He has a Bachelor of Science degree from Bethany University. He has a Master's of Divinity from Christian International Graduate School and a Doctor of Philosophy from California Graduate School of Theology. And he and Kathy have been married and in full-time ministry since 1982. I know my time is up, but I want to say one or two things beyond that. I love you, Pastor David. I respect you. And I'm so grateful. We had a small church before we became part of Gateway. And I always felt alone. And it wasn't until we became part of the Gateway family that I really felt the love, the covering, and the direction. So without further ado, let's welcome <laughs> Pastor David Kenistris. I'm glad we're together. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Well, that, after that introduction, I can hardly wait to hear what I'm going to say. I, I think there should be a lot of forgiveness in this room, a lot of forgiveness. Forgiveness for Hank for his exaggerations, and forgiveness for me enjoying it so much. I have a passion to see the church flourish. Everybody say flourish. And that's why I wrote the book, and I hope you get the book, not because... I don't make any money on the books that you're buying today. Um, I'm not interested in that. What I am interested in is in causing the church to flourish. And I believe that teams will cause a church to flourish. Those books that Hank were ta was talking about, I wrote each of them in a, in a timing and, and for a reason. And I just really believe that the book will help any church to grow and get strong. And that's why I wrote it. So I hope you get it. I believe it's going to be a tool that will help you. Let me talk to you about Kevin. I don't know if Kevin Nagel is here, but uh, my topic this morning is about tools for building teams. In fact, chapter six in the book, the last part of the book, is, uh, is seven tools for building a team. So if you want to learn how to build a team, you read, chapter, you read chapter six. But I start that chapter by telling a story that I've said here to our church, but maybe not all of you have heard this. Kevin's in our church, and he's been here for about 25 years, and he owns an air conditioning, he, his own air conditioning heating company, and he's a contractor, and one day he called me, and he said, have you got a minute? And I really didn't, but I, I lied, and I said, yes, I do. What's going on? And he said, um, I, I just, don't, I don't know what's going on. I, you know, Cherie, my wife, has just been battling cancer. She's been through so much. I feel like the world is falling apart. My, I'm struggling at work. And then he said, and today, all of my tools were stolen off of my truck. Now I can't even earn a living. And I was just devastated. And I said, Kevin, oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry to hear that. Let's pray. We prayed a little bit. And I said, I know God's going to do something. But let's just pray, you know. So we prayed. And he was discouraged. I could just feel it. And we finally hung up. And uh, he's, he's a man of strong faith, but still, you know, when you get hit, it's like, it's like a drag. You know? So about two weeks later, I hadn't talked to him since we prayed, and he was at the same um, 50th anniversary party that I was at. Pat and Diane Martinez had a 50th anniversary, a beautiful J June day, and I saw Kevin, and he was smiling, and Cherie was smiling, and their kids are beautiful. And they were all smiling. This just looked like a cover of a magazine or something, walking into this event. And I said, what's going on, you guys? And, and they were just laughing. And I said, what happened with the tools? What happened with, you know? He said, oh. He said, God totally turned that into a blessing. I said, how is that? He said, Pastor David, I, I did not realize. I've had these tools that I've been using for years and years and years and he said, I went out and I replaced them. Of course, I had to with the insurance money or however he got the money for the new tools. 
he bought them. And he said, as I started using those new tools, I realized that the old tools that I had were slowing me down. And that, that everything that I was doing was taking twice as long and it was twice as hard because I had old tools. He said, now that I have new tools, I mean, I'm making money. He said, in the end, it was a, a blessing from God that, I, that all those old tools were taken away. And I said, Kevin, heaven and earth have revealed this to you. This, I am going to, what you just said, I'm going to preach all over the world. I'm going to preach it at the IL conference. That's where I'm going to preach at. Because, he said, what? What are you talking about? He said, I said, because almost everybody that's doing ministry is using old tools. We're just used to doing things the way we do it. And that's the way we did it back in whenever, when we learned. And so we haven't learned anything since then. And God wants to give us new tools. And it's not that the work changes. It's not that our job changes. It's not that our gift changes. It's just there's a better way to do things than the way that we've been doing it. So today, because the conference, the conference is really about team, I want to talk about new tools for building teams. Now, you can get all the tools in the book, and I'm only going to just pick out three that I think everybody would benefit from. Let's say that God has called you to build an intercessor's team. So you want to build a team to pray for your pastor, or you want to pray for America, or let's say you want to build an outreach team, or you want to build a hospitality team, or maybe a connections team, what, whatever kind of a team, a youth leadership team, right? There's all kinds of teams that a church could have, a worship team. How many know you got to have a special gift to get musicians to get along together and be a team? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, you better have some new tools for that, right? So... But whatever team you're trying to build, how would you do it? How, if you were going to try to build this team, what, would you, what tools would you use to make sure that it's a healthy team, that it gets its job done properly, and that everybody on the team is having a good time, that it's, that it's a, a healthy team? I want to give you three tools, and then we're going to go into, when I'm done talking, we're going to, let's see, I'm going to be done talking at 225, and then Pastor Chris is going to guide us back into meetups, right? And then we're going to talk a little bit about the things that uh, are important in our meetups. So let me give you three tools that would help you, three new tools for your life. The first one is new, but it's not so new. It's called prayer. If you want to build a team, prayer births the team. Don't try to get something going that you haven't birthed in prayer. If you're going to do new, new things for God, you better see it birthed in prayer. We're praying over Phoenix, aren't we? We're praying over it because we're doing something that's, that we've never done before, and we have to birth it in prayer. It has to be brought forth in prayer. And you know who I learned this from? I learned it from the greatest team builder ever, the Lord Jesus Christ. Before he built his team, he birthed it in prayer. If you go to Luke chapter 6, you'll find out that he prayed all night long. And then he called people together. Prayer is the beginning of everything. And if you can do it without praying, it probably shouldn't be done. We should be about doing things that will utterly fail unless God himself shows up. And I look, at, I look at ministry and I look at what's happening and I see the campuses and the churches and the leaders and, and I just think, how did all this happen? How could this possibly, how could this team be so strong? How could this be happening? And I, and I know that our church was built on a foundation of prayer. We have a prayer meeting in our church and, and we have prayer meetings as a staff. We get together, we make prayer a priority. And I want to challenge you to put prayer into your schedule and put it into your... Now, I'm qualified to talk about all the thousands of excuses why you can't pray. You know why I know? Because I've made all of them. And I know whenever somebody talks about prayer, there's just this like cloud of shame, you know, that drops down on people because none of us feels like we pray enough. 
And it's not about trying to pray enough, but just understanding that if God is your partner, um, it, 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 it's going to be because you have taken the time to talk to him about what you're trying to build. I was so scared in the year 2000 when I was installed as the senior pastor of Gateway City Church at the time, Evangel Christian Fellowship. I was so scared that I fasted for 40 days. <laughs> That's how I began. It was, the, it was my first year as a 40-year-old. It was my first year as a lead pastor. And we were heading into a building project. And I was, I was being installed into this. I remember I had a dream one time that I was in a 747 airplane. And I was just one of the passengers way in the back. And suddenly they made an announcement. David Canastracy, please come to the cockpit. I thought, I'm just traveling. David Canastracy, please come to the cockpit. And I went up to the cockpit and they said, you have to take this plane and land it. It was a 747. I said, I'm just a passenger. And that's how I felt since day one, right? <laughs> so I fasted and prayed. But, you know, in that dream, what happened was the pilot said, look, we're going to connect you with the control tower. And you're going to get this ear thing. You're going to get a headset. And all you have to do is listen to the voice that's in your headset. And they're going to tell you what button to push and, and how we're going to give you step-by-step -step directions, and you're going to land this plane safely. And suddenly I had the confidence because I, I understood if it's not up to me, if it's just a, if I can just hear what God is saying to me and follow it, then I'll be able to do it. And you know, prayer is that place of not just talking, but as Pastor Hank was saying, listening. And prayer and waiting on God is really where a team begins. We pray because we have a big responsibility. We pray because we will face vicious spiritual attacks. Everybody say vicious. The enemy is vicious. So Jesus modeled that we should pray because we have a big responsibility and because we will face vicious spiritual attacks. What can we pray for when we, when we pray? What should we be praying for? We can pray for so many things. Pray for your team. Pray for vision. Pray for direction. Pray for God's guidance. Pray, as Jesus said, pray for the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest. You say, well, I can't find people. I, I can't find people. Talk to God. Well, nobody wants to work in my ministry. Talk to God. Pray. Fast. Seek the face of God and call them in from the north, south, east, and west because God wants to. There are people out there that are saying, God, I want to serve you, but I don't know what you want me to do. And you're thinking, I'm building a team, and I know exactly what they should be doing. And God, the Lord of the harvest, will connect the two people and put together the team. Everybody say prayer. prayer. All right, that's, that's a very important. And can I challenge every person here to think hard about where prayer is in a priority system in your life? Do you have an appointment to pray? Do you have a time to pray? Have you made it a part of your culture, a part of your family? Is prayer a part of your life? Because if you want to do great things for God, make prayer a discipline. Make it a rhythm in your life. Not that, you know, you're 24 hours of prayer, some crazy thing. You know, everybody's got a job. Everybody's got kids. We all have laundry. We have to mow our lawns and go to Kmart and do all that stuff. But you, you take prayer with you, and you, you include God and prayer in your ministry. And that births the team. That's how Jesus birthed the team. Right now, I'm, I have a team of... I, is there, I think there's almost 50 people uh, paid in paid ministry at Gateway. That's a big team. And hundreds, did you see these numbers that they're putting up on there? Hundreds of times. I said, where did, this, where did this team come from? I can only tell you that prayer births the team. In fact, every great church in the world that is a growing church is a praying church. Build a culture of prayer into your church. Number two, team building number two, tool number two uh, is called recruiting. Recruiting, go ahead and put up number two. Recruiting attracts the team. Now, there's three things that you've got to learn how to, you've got to learn how to call people into ministry. 
Jesus called people into ministry. He didn't, Jesus never made an announcement. He never printed it in the bulletin. He went to people and he said, I see potential in you and I think you're supposed to follow me and let's do this together. Would you follow me? And they followed him. I got my hair cut yesterday. No, day before yesterday. How you like it? Okay. Deron, it's crispy. Deron Chapman down at Timeless Barber cut my hair. A couple of days before I got my hair cut, the Lord spoke to me. My hand is on Deron. I said, well, I know he's a Christian. He was telling me that he goes to a certain church. And, of course, he knows what I do. And uh, so I said to him, he's cutting my hair. And I said, Deron, do you, do, do you have anybody in your family that's ever done, done ministry? Or do you, do you ever th- think about ministry? He said, I think about it all the time. But he said, nobody in my family. He said, I wouldn't know how to do it. And I said, you know, it's funny. I get this vibe from, I feel like God wants to use your life. I feel like there's a call. He said, I'm getting goosebumps. Because two weeks ago, somebody else told me that. And I said to God, God, if that's real, I want to hear it one more time. So I said, well, I think God is, I think God is calling. He said, but what would I do? Where, how would I even know how to get started? And so I started to tell him about our church. We have a free Bible school, and we raise up leaders, and hundreds of leaders are being raised up, and he, he's going to be here. You're going to meet him. I recruited him without recruiting him. I made it a relationship. I took an interest in his life. I got interested in him. Our problem is we're thinking about our team so much. We're not thinking about that one guy. So you reach out in love and you think about a person's potential. What is, what is God doing? And then how could I help you be great? Is there a way that I could help you with that, that God wants to do something in your life? Recruiting will will be something that is so important. Everybody wants to make a difference. Say that with me. Everybody wants to make a difference. You know how many barbers named Iran there are? There's a lot. And they all want to make a difference. Everybody, everybody wants to be somebody, and nobody wants to be a nobody. So when you're, when you're talking to people, you, you, you show an interest, you show love. Then you do three things. You call, and you select, and you place. I'm going to move on to the to the last part, um, and I'll say this. If you build on your team, on your team, if you build a really healthy team, a really healthy campus, a really healthy culture, I've never said this publicly, but I'm going to say it today. If you build the right culture, you'll hardly have to recruit people at all. They'll look at that, and they'll say, I, how, do I, how, do, how could I be a part of that? You say, well, I I don't think you can. No, I really want to. Okay, you can. If you build a healthy children's ministry, a healthy youth ministry, if you build a healthy prayer team, people will know it's healthy, and they'll say, how could I, how would I be a part of this? How would I, how would I get involved? You say, well, I'm glad you asked. So build it strong. Build it healthy. Do a good job with it. Let me move to the, to the last one. It's team building tool number five. I know it's the third one I gave you, but it is number five. Trust me. I wrote the book. I know. It's number five. Okay. <clears throat> and that is personal attention. If you want to build a healthy team and a good team, you've got to pay personal attention. You have to make it a relationship. You've got to make it about love and give yourself. Nobody wants to be on your team if you just want to give them a job description and send them on their way and rebuke them when they make a mistake. That's no fun. But people will want to be a part of your team if you love them while they're on your team. And if you show a personal interest, great team builders don't just think about the job that they're trying to get done. They try to think about the people that are doing the job. So you make it a relationship. Why should we give personal care to our team? Let me give you three quick ideas. First, our team is about people. If, if it's a ministry team, what are we doing if we're not taking care of people? 
What, what, are, what did we actually get into the ministry for? The pay? The perks? The respect? Uh, you better look for another job. What did you get into ministry for? It's about people. It's about taking care of people. So if you're in ministry, you better think about how you can care and love and serve because ministry is about people, not positions and titles. It's not about benefits, entitlements. Team is about people. Second, our team will be attacked. You better take care of your team because the enemy's got his eye. He's sniffing around your team right now. The people that are important to you in life, those that are on your team, the enemy is sniffing around them right now. He's sniffing around your kids, and you better take care of your team, and you better take care of your family and pay attention to it because your team's going to be attacked. Lastly, our team needs to stay together. The worst thing you can do is lose people constantly from your team. So if you take care of your team, if you love on them and minister to them and pray for them and connect with them, I mean really connect with your team, care about them, text them for no reason and say, how's it going? Connect and make it a relationship. Then your team will stay together. There's a book called Tribal Knowledge written by a man named John Moore. He said this. Put the quote up on the screen. I'll close with this. People don't quit organizations. They quit people. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? Maybe you can talk about that in your, in your meetup. But if we take care of the people that are on our team, if we connect with them, they probably won't leave us. We've got to take care of our teams. Can I have an amen? Teams are, what is a team? A team is it's relationships. That's all it is. It's, rela- it's people in relationship that are functioning. They're getting something done. That's what I love about teams. They're great. They're great for relationships, but they also get something done. Team is beautiful. But if you take the relationship and the care and the love out of it, that's why Jesus said the greatest commandment is what? Love. This is my commandment, that you love one another. He said, go into all the world, preach the gospel, teaching them to obey my commandments. What are his commandments? Love. It's not about church and how you cut your hair and The commandments that Jesus gave are commandments to, that's about relationship. So what I'm telling you, this is a very deep session. But if you want to build a great worship team or you want to build a great children's team or you want to build a great youth team, make it about love. Don't just throw duties at people. Make it a relationship and draw them in and and tell them the why. And if you build that way, taking care of your team Once in a while, they'll leave you, but mostly they'll stick around. Mostly they'll stay, and you'll have a strong and healthy team. Now, if you want the other six steps for building a team, you know what you have to do. (laughs) Lord, I pray that we will build in all our campuses strong teams, Lord, where people have been doing things by themselves, one sound guy, one setup guy, one children's ministry. Lord, build multiple teams. Let there be so many teams. Everybody's saying, how do I get on the team? How do I serve? How could I be a part of this? Lord, open up this revelation for us and let us use teams to win many people to Jesus Christ. We praise you for this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Chris. Wow, there's a lot of to unpack in that, amen? So we're going to be doing our, our second meetup here. People have asked me, hey, can I go to this one here and then go to another meetup here? You can do that. That's totally whatever you'd like to fit in. But here's the deal. We want to just really unpack what we heard here and ask the tough questions. Now's the time to really start praying through and believing for that, that grace to take away what we've been hearing here and work it out, amen? So here's the deal. We're going to go to about 310. All you... Uh, host leaders in the groups here, and then we're going to take some time off. We start the, the fourth session. Pastor Chandler Cleveland is going to be here, 320, 
right here. So watch your clocks. Let's have some breakouts that are going to be really blessed. And on the count of three, one, two, three, goodbye.